Well, hello, hello, Dixie Belle paint fans. How are you today? It is Melissa from the Top Drawer RVA, hopping on live to sit on the floor and play with some paint, like we do every Wednesday at 3 p.m. EST, making something fabulous. So welcome, how are you today? When you join me, I'd love it if you drop in the comments below where you're watching from. Let me know you can hear me and see me A-OK, -okay, and we will jump right in and do some painting. So you can see my little ugly duckling behind me. You guys know that I love to paint some cabinets and I'm often painting cabinets that are super, super <laughs> ugly. It's not a very cute cabinet, I know. I know it's not cute, but that's okay. We're gonna make it beautiful today and you're gonna come along for the joining me and the, the journey of painting this ugly duckling. So let's begin, shall we? Let's begin. Hi, Brooke, I see you watching. Great, I see people hopping on. Always takes a few minutes. You know, it's just enough time to like pique my anxiety wondering if anybody's actually gonna come join me today. <laughs> so, let's do this. This is our project. This is our little um, ugly duckling. We're gonna make her pretty. And I have a sneak peek for you guys today. I have a, a kind of a sneak peek big deal. So I don't know if you know this or not, but coming soon to Dixie Belle is some new brushes. <laughs> Did you know that they're gonna be releasing some new brushes? Possibly as soon as next week to your local elite retailers. I don't know when, but they're coming soon. And we've been given the green light to show you and talk a little bit about some new brushes that are coming. So let's do this, shall we? Let's jump in. All right, so today's project is going to be a blended beauty, a blended ombre beauty. And if you remember, I did a live in December um, that was a beautiful dresser. We did a lot of really dark blues. We did pretty metallics. We mushed them all together. We had a lot of fun. I played with the scars a little bit. We did some stencils. I'm gonna do the same thing, but on a lighter kind of a, a softer version. And this is what's gonna help me do it. Dun, dun, dun. This is the new brush from Dixie Belle. Okay, so we have two new brushes coming soon from Dixie Belle. Not out yet, you're getting the sneak peek today. There are two new brushes. La Petite. La Petite has got a little bit of wax on her because I used her for some black wax. It's a palm sized blending brush that's going to be doing amazing things for when you're applying your wax and getting in there and blending things and making them pretty. So we're going to put this on the floor today and maybe we're going to play with this, alright? So this is coming soon. This is a 70% um, natural, 30% synthetic brush, alright? So it's more like a a kind of a, a natural bristle brush. We also have this brush, which is kind of my new fave because for wax, this thing's the bomb.com and for blending, it is absolutely fabulous. It again is a 70% um, synthetic fiber or 70% natural, 30% synthetic fiber brush. Really big, huge handle, heavy duty. And if you're waxing, you're gonna be able to get in there and apply your wax really easily. This made my waxing job go by super fast because you all know you have to get in there and use your muscles to get at these things, right? To get at those wax, you have to really push it in and this is gonna help you. Um, this one I used the other day, you see a little bit of blue on here for some blending and I've already washed it with my scrubby soap. And actually, I did it live. If you wanna go see me washing brushes live just for for fun, <laughs> you can go over to my Facebook page, which I've linked above my head, and you can watch me paint and do crazy things like wash brushes in my kitchen sink, because that's what we do over here. That's what we do. All right, so let's get started, shall we? All right, first things first. We're gonna take this ugly and make it a little prettier. And how are we gonna do that? How would you change something? Well, I personally am a big fan of Would You Bend? Hence my Would You Bend apron. Hello, Would You Bend. <laughs> and Would You Bend has over 50 exclusive designs that are available to Dixie Bell. Um, so if you want to check them out, they're actually under tools on the Dixie Bell paint page, which I also have linked above my head. And they are now selling their Would You Bend moldings in these fantastic little packages. Check this out. So this is a piece of wood. Would You Bends are fragile. They're fragile little creatures, y'all. They are hard when they're cold, and when they're warm, they're bendy. So if I drop this, it's gonna break. If I bend it, it's gonna break. It has to be warm to be kind of malleable and, and bendable. So shipping it on this fun little package makes a really great way to never get a broken Would You Bend. You gotta check it out. Check it out. So this is gonna be Would You Bend number one, three, three, nine. Set it to 
and we're gonna zhuzh this up, all right? We're gonna make this pretty, this little cabinet. And I'm gonna show you how to use wooden bench, okay? So, on the floor, I have a couple things. When you are using wood you bend, you're gonna to wanna to get a couple things. And I'm gonna to wanna to get a couple things that I didn't put down, what the heck? Where's my tape? I like to tape things up when I use my wood you bends on vertical surfaces to just hold it there and, and give me an extra pair of hands. So I'm gonna rip off two pieces of tape to be my extra hands for this video. And we're gonna heat up some wood you bend and get a little fancy in here. You wanna join me? Well, let's do this. All right, so. Wood you bends can be heated by a hair dryer, a griddle, like a pancake griddle, or a heat gun. Don't burn yourself with heat gun. I have an irrational fear of heat guns and irons. I don't know why, it just is. It's what I'm afraid of. Some people are afraid of spiders. I'm kind of afraid of heat gun. Um, next hot tip, handy dandy tip of the day is, <laughs> don't heat your wood you bends up on your little moving blanket that's on the floor, trying to keep everything not dirty because it will melt. Don't ask me how I know this, but I know these things. How do you think? So let's heat it up, shall we? I'm gonna put this on the floor, away from the blanket, and we're gonna heat it up. It only takes a few minutes. These wood you bends are a little bit thick. The thicker the wood you bend, the longer it's gonna take to heat up in order to become bendable and malleable. You can bend them around surfaces. You can put them on a curved um, surface, and they're really easy to use, okay? So now that I've heated up one would you bend, you can see that I can bend it now. Look, it's bendy. So you're gonna to wanna to put glue on the back, okay? I have a paintbrush on the floor because I never shut my lids and I have glued my lid shut. <laughs> Again, surprise, surprise. So I'm gonna put this glue on with a little brush and we're gonna stick it up here on this cabinet, okay? So you're gonna mush the glue on here Get it like kind of like all on the tips. Get it where all of these sections are so that you know you're getting your glue kind of spread out, okay? It's still bendy, it's still warm. I can still feel the heat. This is a flat surface that's going on so I'm not really worried. All right, I'm gonna put this down. I'm gonna look at the table and I'm gonna turn my head, all right? I wanna kind of put it right in the center of this piece. So I need to kind of sit back and like see. I like this, I like this a lot. If you have glue coming out, don't worry about it, you can totally wipe that off. So now that this is on here, I wanna make sure it stays centered. I'm gonna stick a piece of tape on there, we're gonna hold it. This is just gonna be my extra hands. Once your piece is on your furniture, you're gonna to wanna to heat it again, just to ensure it's flat to the surface, okay? I don't make the rules, I just follow them. And I'm gonna give it a little press. I'm just gonna hold it there for a quick second, making sure that my glue is adhering, making sure that this wood piece is sticking onto the surface. All right, let's do the other one because what I do to one side, I'm gonna do to the other. So I'm gonna heat it up. Ready? Again, off my moving blanket because it'll melt your moving blanket. Moving my heat gun out of the way so I don't burn myself and put glue onto my piece. All right, I'm using a brush, mashing it on, and we will stick it on the opposite side to match the other one. You don't need a ton of glue, y'all. These are really, really sticky little creatures. They stick on there really good. Again, I'm going to turn my head because I got to make sure it's even. I'm gonna take this tape off so I can doubly make sure. I'm gonna go with yes. That's even enough. If you're a smart cookie, you would line this stuff up before you start a live video so that you can make sure that it's completely even and mark it with a pencil. But that would require <laughs> the ability that I don't have. So let's heat it up just to make sure. Sometimes I get prepared and do this. Other times, do a lot of this, and um, not a lot of that. <laughs> okay, so now that I've heated it again, I'm just gonna push, making sure it's flat to the surface. Once your wood you bends are on your piece, you're good to go. You can start painting right now. 
and you would be totally fine. I'm going to turn my cabinet and give it one more once over, making sure that it is nice and even steamed, okay? <clears throat> okay, so now you're looking at my would you beds. Because now they're stuck on there. Like I could start painting right now. They're, they're stuck. I don't need this anymore. I just like it when that initial glue goes on to really make sure that they're like stuck. <coughs> Let's see. Now my ugly cabinet has some fancy pants jewelry on. It's not so ugly anymore, right? This is going to give it a little bit more life, a little bit more detail. Adding wood you bend moldings to your pieces is a great way to take a ugly, boring cabinet and dress it up really nicely, all right? All right, so here's the plan for today. I have a bunch of blues on the floor, and I'm gonna tell you what blues I have, and I don't really know what order I'm gonna do them in, because normally when you do an ombre blend, you go kind of like dark to light or light to dark. I'm not gonna do that today. I'm going to kind of do a, a big mash of all the blues, a big mesh of color. Let's see, I see Dixie Bell asking, who has Would You Bend? You should have Would You Bend. I feel like it's a necessity in everybody's toolbox. You need Would You Bend. So to prepare this piece, all I did was clean it with white lightning. That's all I did, okay? Just so you know, that's the only prep that I needed for this piece, clean and ready to go. So I have on the floor, Bunker Hill Blue. I have a little bit of Moonshine Metallics in Caribbean. I have Savannah Mist, Dusty Blue, Pure Ocean, but I have a feeling I'm not gonna use this one, so I'm not gonna open it, but it's gonna be there, just in case. Just in case I need it. I see somebody asking which would you bend it is. It is number 1339. And a little bit of the Gulf. Let's see. So, normally these little ombre blends are very kind of precise and you keep a separate brush for every color. We're not playing that game today. We're just gonna jump right in and make a big giant mess and it's gonna look fabulous. We're gonna do a lot of um, mashing paint. That's my technical term for the day. Mash your paint, all right? All right, so all the blues are open on my floor right now. Wanna see? Hello, all my blue right here. We're not gonna keep a separate brush, but I am gonna use a spray misting bottle filled with water and I'm gonna dampen my brush. My initial coat, I'm going to forewarn you, is going to be very ugly. There's no, uh, there's no immediate pretty, all right? These things take time and they all have an ugly face. I also like to always kind of start at a bottom corner. So Bunker Hill Blue is gonna go on dark on this corner and I'm going to paint over top of these hinges, FYI. Don't judge me. Because I want them to disappear. Okay, so I have my Bunker Hill. Let's put a little pair. I'm gonna paint the whole thing, FYI. I'm not staining the top. The whole thing's getting painted, so I don't care if I get paint on this. But I will not be painting the sides today because I did do a bunch of Dixie Belle mud repair on that side and I haven't sanded it back yet. So this is organically gonna take form. Do I want to do like four corners and kind of like blend it in? I don't know yet. We could change it. It's just gonna, this is just gonna happen. Okay, we're just making it happen. So the couple brushes I have on the floor today are the flat medium and a large round, all right? I'm not gonna use my embedding brush until the second coat. Second coat's gonna get this and that's what's gonna blend these colors together and you're gonna see how good that brush is, all right? So Bunker Hill, next is Dusty Blue. I will, in this mash of colors, keep the darks with the darks and traveling into a lighter pattern. I'm not gonna get totally crazy and put like the lightest color beside the darkest dark because that's gonna be a harder blend. I'm just gonna use this dusty blue and put it beside Would you bends can be painted before you put them on or after you put them on. I have another project I'm working on and it's gonna be having these little gears with it and I painted these in mousse today. These will be painted in Dixie Belle's Gemstone Mousse Golden Gem and they will be stuck on the piece. Is the right side straight? It's, it's straight, I got it on wheelies. Uh, it's just the camera looks like that. I think the camera, if you're really close, kind of makes it look a little bit more crooked. Is that better for you? 
maybe that'll help. I like to be close, like I feel like people want to see what's ever happening over here. So right now we're just going to lay down a bunch of colors. This is a organic, simple, easy way to paint. This is not hard, okay? This is something anybody can do, you just need to go with the flow, all right? So now we've got Bunker Hill, a little bit of dusty blue. Let's add some Savannah Mist. And I'm also painting with the door shut. I will open the doors later, not now. Same brush, not even getting, um, not getting a clean brush yet because I don't want to. That's why, <laughs> just because of mashing the colors around. All right, so some Savannah Mist. We're gonna move these over here so I don't paint them because I love painting. Painting my glasses. So you just need to go back and forth between Savannah Mist and Dusty Blue. I feel like I wanna put more of the Bunker Hill up here, so let's bring some Bunker Hill over. And I'm gonna double dip and put a little bit of Moonshine Metallics in. This is the Caribbean. This isn't gonna be a heavy coverage color. This is just gonna be a shine. When we match this all together, the shine is gonna peek through just a little bit. Okay, let's use one more brush with a lighter color. Let's use the Gulf with another brush, okay? Gorgeous, gorgeous teal green. There's absolutely no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing right now. I'm literally just smashing on my colors. Love this color. I love the golf. It's such a pretty tone. Now let's get in and paint right over top of these would you bends and show you how easy it is. I'm going to put a little bit of the gulf. Would you bends are kind of porous, so they like suck that right in. Okay, I'm going to go back to some dusty blue. y'all are judging me hard right now that this looks terrible. Jeez. Trust me, there is a method behind the madness. If you find you're getting it into your wood you bends and, and they're not traveling in hard enough, like you want to jam that paint right in there, you can wet your brush and help pounce that paint right in. I feel like I want to definitely put more dark on one side, so I'm going to add more Bunker Hill on this side. I don't want it to be too neat. I want more mess. I want more of an organic flow, okay? So I'm adding this Bunker Hill. To darken this up some. And I feel like I even need more over here. Okay, and I'm gonna put more, more of this really pretty sea glass over here. Or no, this isn't sea glass, sorry, this is the gulf. I'm gonna put more of the gulf over here. I told you that it would look nice and ugly. Trust me. Trust the process, y'all. Trust the process. Okay, so. Lots of color mashing going on, okay? Totally no rhyme and reason other than I want this to be an organic feel. In the real perfect world, I would be painting without an audience and I would be sitting here waiting for this to get dry. I am not going to sit and wait for this to get dry because I'm in the painting world right now and I need to teach you. So I'm gonna dry it a little bit with my heat gun. Just because the second coat is gonna go on, 
and we're going to mash it and move it around. How pretty are those wintry beds though? Doesn't that look great? Doesn't it look so much better already with wood you bin? They look so good on every piece. So the only reason I'm doing this is to speed up the process, right? A more neutral color I'm throwing in the mix okay this just happens to be my French linen in a cup because I didn't close my lid and it got really junky and gross so I had to put it in this little bottle to keep it nice and fresh so I am going to add now to this mix some French linen because this neutral is going to be what pulls all of these colors together I also have on the floor a couple rags okay just t-shirt like rags and we are going to start to mix some colors. So, before I start, am I missing anything? Am I missing any questions? Anything that needs to be answered? Ask me now. <laughs> Ask me now. Nothing? All right, well then, let's do this, shall we? So, we are going to get our brand new Best Dang Brush. This nice, substantial, heavy brush. We're gonna make some magic. All right, let's start up here. I'm going to apply the original color, right? Because I had a blue here, right? And then I'm going to go back to my other brushes and add in whatever I put here. So we have dusty blue, we have this gulf, we have some really pretty kind of mixed in savanna mist, and we're going to put this down. Now, I'm going to Grip one more brush and add in that beautiful French linen. Not a lot, okay? Just a little bit. Just as my neutral. See how I did that? I just dropped it on. I just dropped it on. All right? So now I'm going to take this big Bestang brush and we're going to start to blend our colors together. You can dampen this if you want. If I know where I put my spray misting bottle, it goes with water. Yikes! You almost had a minor catastrophe. This is why I paint the floor, y'all, because I knock surf over all the time. So I've got my rag and I've got my brush. This is going to be my tool now to start blending these colors together. Soft hand. basically going to take everything that we just did and make it look like a giant cloud. Can you see? Can you see what's starting to happen over here? Can you see that mix? Now see there's paint on here. I'm not going to want all that paint. So this is where the rag comes in to buff off some of that extra paint and move it around. Softening those edges. Now I want to come back in here with my, the gulf and a little bit of that bunker hill. And let's add in some moonshine metallic, shall we? Caribbean. Now I'm going to put that tiny bit of French linen. This is just my medium to kind of keep these colors fluid, if that makes sense. Blotting off my brush, reapplying moisture. This brush holds a heavy duty amount of paint, so you, I feel the need to really blot off, okay? We're softening all of these edges. We're 
moving the paint around. And creating a big cloud. It is harder in these little kind of crevices. Again, I'm, I'm load some of that paint on my rag. Pull some of this off. Can you start to see how pretty? Again, drag it off. It, it, it almost like it pulls the paint in this brush. This is really good for an arm workout. <laughs> My arm is going to be so sore after this. It is what it is. Again, blobbing off. Okay, so now we've worked this small section of paint. We've taken those original colors, that Bunker Hill, and that really kind of dusty blue. You can start to see how that sawmill, what did I say it was, not sawmill, French linen starts to play in to mixing. You need, you need a neutral. You can't just do this in all blue because it's going to be too much. It's going to be too much power, if you know what I mean. You need that softening effect of that really pretty, you know, French linen to kind of take it down, take it down a notch. Otherwise, it's like too much. Are you able to see my vision now a little bit? How ugly, <laughs> ugly and crazy can go to pretty and soft. Look how pretty. Also, this is a, a natural bristle brush. It's gonna shed a little bit. If you like, you can wash it a couple times before you use it. I've washed this once, um, but it's gonna shed. It is what it is. They always shed, okay? So now I'm looking at this pretty blue. Now you can start to decide, what do you wanna add? Do you want to add some more different color? Are you liking the colors that are on there? You know, blocking out these colors to begin with is what's going to help you keep it kind of on track, if that makes sense. When I was doing this and laying those colors, that's why I wanted that blue, that darker blue kind of wave. If I would have done too uniform, it would have looked weird. The other thing is you can't work in really big sections. You kind of have to work in these smaller sections, right? Because if your sections are too big, you, you can't cover. You have to work in these small wet areas. All right, so which blues are being used today? We have Bunker Hill, Dusty Blue, Savannah Mist. Um, I've put in a tiny little bit of the Moonshine Metallus Caribbean, and I've got the Gulf. That's pretty much it. You can choose whatever color, like family, what color pattern you want. Um, I just happen to like blues. Blue to me is like the closest you're going to get to a neutral. <laughs> so, all right, so back to this big brush, which if you're just tuning in, is brand new, not released yet. Stay tuned. You're getting your sneak peeks today, okay? This is going to be called Best Dang Brush. Amazing for wax and doing this job. So easy. But again, huge muscles because it's, it's hard arm work, all right? So light hand. You see how far up I'm holding it? Let's just make some pretty mash up clouds. Can you see how that, that really pretty neutral takes it back down some? If you didn't have that, it's just, it wouldn't be the same. You can spray your brush. You have to wipe it off. I've got this old t-shirt that I cut up. And down here, I think I want to keep that corner fairly dark. So I'm going to just deposit a little bit more Bunker Hill. You're just taking the time to mesh, there's my technical term, mesh those colors together, right? Again, rub off the excess, wet your brush. I 
think what you're going to want to do is keep one of these for paint and one of these for wax. Let's see. Another one you have to spring for. Listen, this, you haven't had this yet. I haven't had this, this brush. The weight and the quality and these really thick, sturdy bristles, it's a game changer, y'all. It is a game changer. You can kind of tell with the motion that I'm using how easy this will be for your wax. Um, and using that, I'm gonna put a little bit more French linen on here. Just feel the need to lighten it up a tiny bit. So the more you wipe off your brush, the less like kind of color contamination you're gonna have. Okay, so let's stop now that we're almost halfway. Can you see how from ugly and from this grossness, <laughs> it went to this blended beauty, this gorgeous cloudscape of gorgeous colors? I mean, the light right now isn't even really being true. It's very dark out here. We're supposed to get snow tonight. Um, so my light is white based, but in person, this looks a little bit more creamy. The highlights are hitting. You know, you're seeing this gorgeous wood you bend. I'm gonna come in here later when this is dry and do Dixie Dirt, darken up all of these edges. I'm gonna come in with the gold and highlight all of these cute little spots. I'm gonna put brand new hardware on here. All of a sudden, we took our ugly duckling to this gorgeous beast. What do you think? Do you love it? Throw me some love, throw me some hearts, let me know. I think, uh, I think this new brush, once it does come out, is gonna be everybody's best new friend. <laughs> the best day brush will be your best day new friend because this is just making my job just easy peasy. Easy peasy for blending. What do we think? Super pretty, right? Ooh, let's work on this side and then I'll stop because I do have to do that repair over on this side and then I have to obviously do the top and the sides. Let's continue our little project here. So remember, second coats mean you gotta come in with that kind of original color Kind of mash it in, work in your sections because you can't get too big. Remember, your paint dries fairly quickly. So putting those colors down. And don't forget your neutral, right? I need to I need to deposit my French linen in there. Otherwise, the color is gonna to get too blue. It's gonna to be too heavy. So we're gonna blend it together. Let's see. I must have tie-dyed. I know, and you know when it dries, you know how paint changes a little bit. The darkness, the pigment changes and it'll change even more when you start to add some waxes and some shine to all the edges. It's like, like a beautiful cloud. <laughs> it's super pretty. So I think the ticket is keeping your brush damp, wiping off that excess color because we're using a lot here, right? This is a lot of color. This is a lot of stuff going on. Wiping it off and keeping it damp is what's going to help you blend. Working in small sections, And getting that muscle in there, that arm power, right? See, one tiny hair. I will suffer for one tiny hair. I don't care because I love this brush. Love it, love this brush. Okay, let's add a tiny bit more dark in the middle. I feel like it's just getting a little bit too different. It needs to have something bring it together. So this little middle spot will be the thing that pulls it together. Okay, so that is pretty much the only area that I've wet. So now I have to come back down here. I feel like I wanna add a little bit more dark. Just a bit, just a bit more dark. Let's add some moonshine metallics, okay? The metallics are gonna disappear, but you know what they're gonna do? They're gonna provide you with a, a glittery shine. Just a little bit of a shine. Blot off my brush. Yes, that's what we 
we want it. Okay, we're almost there. We're almost done. Sweating over here. It's getting hot. It's getting hot in here. Let's add the dark. And let's add some more of that French linen. Because I see it here, I need more here. My eye automatically tells me kind of where that needs to be. It needs to, it doesn't match, but I need to have continuity somewhere. So if I have it here, it has to be over here somewhere or that's gonna look weird. You need to pull that stuff together. All right. Blotting it off. Now you understand why that first coat needed to be more dry because I'm pushing. And if you push hard, you're gonna pull off if it's not dry underneath. Okay, so here's where I stop. Why do I stop? I stop because I need to wait. I need to step back. I need to let this get dry. I need to evaluate my color choices, what I did, I'm loving this. I'm loving those little peaks of that really pretty gulf that I put on over there. I'm loving the neutral part of this really pretty French linen. The wood you bends are shining on the front of this now. Can you imagine when I add some beautiful, it's got back plates. I'm going to put in new hardware with back, back plates. It's going to be fabulous. I'm going to dark all the corners with wax. I'm going to highlight all the moldings with gold. I think you can start to see how this little brush is going to change your painting a little bit. This is hard work, y'all. My arm was in there. I'm mashing. I'm jumping around. I'm wearing a sweater, so now I'm getting like toasty hot. But I'm able to create a really pretty faded look. You could call it clouds. You could call it denim. You could call it ombre. You can call it tie-dye. Call it whatever the heck you want to call it. You can call it very pretty though because right now this light in here is very dark and you're not getting a true reading but you all know that i work lickety split quick and i guarantee this will probably be done by tomorrow because <laughs> that's how i roll y'all i am a quick worker number one i can't leave things alone number two i get sucked into a piece and i really 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 want to finish it so what do we think will you try this do you think you'll try this look at home whenever i paint in this organic um way I often sell these pieces in sneak peeks because people love it. People love this style of painting. People like this color. People like this highlight. You know, they, they just really like this natural way of painting. It seems like it's very difficult to do, but this tool is making it very easy. And once you do it a couple times, you're gonna find your tricks, your tips, your things that work to make it easy for you. So I think that is all for me. I'm covered in paint as per usual, all over me. Um, let me give you a quick recap before you go of all the colors so that you know what I used. And if you wanted to try, there is a link above my head where you can find your local retailer or you can have products shipped straight to your door. We started with uh, the dark kind of bunker blue, bunker hill that you're seeing in the corners, which I'm loving. I'm, I'm, thinking I should have maybe even added some in the navy just to make it a bit darker. So we did Bunker Hill, we have Dusty Blue, we have Savannah Mist, we did some of the Gulf. I added a tiny touch of this Moonshine Metallus and Caribbean. Um, and then remember I came in with my French linen as my neutral to dull the boldness a tiny bit because it was very bold, it was very bright. You saw how ugly duckling this was. Is it not already looking a thousand times better? So cute. 
So how do you wash this brush? How do you clean this brush, this natural fiber brush? Um, you're going to clean it with your scrubby soap, the same as you clean all the other brushes. You're going to make sure you really squish it and get all the water out because this is a big, big base. So clean it, dry it, and maybe even leave it, reform your, your brushes and leave it standing up so the water comes out. You don't want the water sitting in this little lip. So now you've got to see, I didn't even get it out today, but the La Petite, the new brush, the La Petite, and Best Dang Brush, which is my new best friend, y'all. Because if I can do this, you can do it too. I hope you enjoyed my little painting sesh today. And if you felt like following me on any social media, my name is Melissa. I am the top drawer RVA. I linked it above my head. Would you bet number today that we used was one, three, three, nine, and all of the blues. If you do this, tag me. I want to see. I want to see what you create um, with this little inspo. All right? And hold tight. This is coming soon. I don't know when, but very soon. Check your local elite retailer. All right? Very soon. Take care, you guys. I'll see you next week at 3 p.m. Bye.